Hi guys, my name is Pratik Singh and we've taken quite a journey, haven't we? We started all the way from how markets work in module one, then in module two, we learned about technical analysis and I think you learned a lot, right from candlesticks all the way to indicators. We even talked about a moving average system. But now, uh, I'm gonna try to make sure you get some guide to actually get started. So here is a useful checklist for you. Choose a time frame that is corresponding to the time frame you want to trade. If you want to trade intraday, choose a time frame like the 30 minute or the 15 minutes and not something like the daily or the weekly. If you want to trade for a shorter period of time but hold on for a few days, you might want to use the daily chart. If you want to trade for many weeks on end or maybe even months, you might want to consider the weekly chart as your base timeline to base your decisions on. It's also a good idea not to start with day trading. I know it can be really tempting. You see the markets moving and it may feel like it's easy to actually use these things we learned today and start trading, but just don't do that because you have to first sharpen your skills over a long period of time to even consider day trading. I started trading in 2007 and it took many, many years for me to actually understand how day trading works. So it should probably make sense for you to start with the daily or weekly time frame. Once you get used to that, you can sort of graduate to a lower time frame like the 30 minute, etc. The next thing is the look back period or how long you want to look back in the past to base your decisions on today. So for example, if you're a scalper and you're using the one minute or five minute to scalp the market, that means enter and exit very quickly, you might want to look back say five days or three days in data. If you are a swing trader looking at the daily charts, you might want to look back up to three months to base your decisions today. This also gives you context into where the stock is, you are in a massive uptrend or a downtrend, or maybe just a massive sideways trend. If you are an investor and you're looking at technical analysis as a guide, you also have a pulse on the market from the technical side, you might want to zoom out and make support and resistance lines over many years. So you might want to use something like the weekly chart to see where massive support zones are and big resistance zones are. The next point in our checklist is the universe. By universe, I mean what basket are you looking at? What universe of stocks are you looking at to actually find stocks to make decisions out of? So there are some, what, 6,000 listed stocks on the BAC and 2,000 probably on the NSE. How do you find what stock to look for? So a good way to begin is just restricting yourself to the Nifty 50 list. The Nifty 100 is a good list as well. It has the top 100 market cap companies in the country and is a good way to find stocks which are liquid. The top 50 are blue chips, so they've been in the market for a very long time and have decent liquidity. Now you have to make sure that if you're trading any stock, it has decent liquidity, which means that the daily trading volume is high. You don't want to trade operator driven stocks. And these are stocks with barely any volume, which can be moved by a few players or maybe even the promoter in some cases. So stay away from unknown companies with very little volume. The next step is actually bringing all of this together. All of this is pretty discretionary and up to the style of the person and what he's comfortable with. On the varsity post on section 19.5, there's a section called the scout. And it's a process that you can follow to actually see how to scan stocks and how the selection process works. So I'd encourage you to check that out. I hope you enjoyed this module and now you have an idea of what technical analysis is. Of course, technical analysis is very deep and you can keep going deeper and deeper into discretionary systems, into objective systems. So far, we've learned technical analysis, which helps us understand the market from a shorter term perspective. From a longer term perspective, you need to learn fundamental analysis. And that's what we're going to learn in the next module.